Hi everyone, Boker Tov, and an early Chag Sameach as the holiday of Pesach, the holiday of Passover is quickly approaching. Thanks for uh, joining this uh, video call. It's wonderful to see all of you, and I'm excited to spend a few minutes learning together. And uh, as we uh, as we uh, sort of ramp our our preparations for the upcoming holiday, um, I just want to say a, a few notes about what's going to happen. I'm going to talk for about uh, five minutes. And then there will be time uh, for questions at the end. We are recording this session so that we can uh, post it online and share it with the community and so those who aren't able to join this call uh, can watch it later. So our topic for today is Kadesh, which is the first step of the Seder. We're going to talk about the actual step of the Seder in Kadesh in a few moments. But first, I want to turn to the cups of wine, which obviously uh, the first cup is, of wine is represented by this first step in the Seder with Kadesh. But there are four cups of wine, Arba Kosot, that we drink during the Seder, and they really serve as organizing anchors for different parts of the Seder. If you think about which uh, steps of the Seder, which aspects of the Seder the four cups of wine are connected to. So we begin with the step of Kadesh, with Kiddush, with making Kiddush and sanctifying the day. That's the first cup of wine. The second cup of wine is connected to the Magid section, which is uh, the essence of what the Pesach Seder, the telling of the story, the retelling of the story of the Exodus from Egypt um, is all about. Then the third cup is connected to Birkat Amazon, which it's, it's traditional to connect um, wine, which is a symbol of joy, with reciting Birkat Amazon, the blessing that we say after the meal is completed. And the third, the fourth cup, excuse me, the fourth cup of wine is connected to Hallel, uh, the Psalms and songs of praise that we sing that really uh, wrap up the Seder. So if you think about these four cups serving as anchors to the Seder, but also bookends to the Seder, we begin with a cup of wine and really close the Seder in many ways with a cup of wine. Um, wine or grape juice being a symbol of joy, a sense of elevation, of elevating ourselves in holiness, which is really the topic that we're gonna get to in just a, in just a moment. But the one question that we first have to ask is why four cups of wine, and we get that answer in an explanation in the Talmud, and the Talmud cites a couple of verses from towards the beginning of the book of Exodus, in, in Exodus chapter six, verses six and seven, and we read there. It says, "Say therefore to the Israelite people, I am the Lord. I will free you from the labors of the Egyptians and deliver you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and through extraordinary chastisements, and I will take you to be my people, and I." will be your God. And the rabbis in the Talmud, they look at these verses and they connect these four promises. I will free you from the labors of the Egyptians. I will deliver you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and I will take you to be my people. Those four promises of God to B'nai Yisrael, and they say those are represented in the Seder by these four cups of wine. So the four cups of wine become this symbol of the excess from Egypt, wine, perhaps a symbol of our freedom. And it's connected to these four promises and this movement from slavery to freedom. And that brings us really to our topic for today, which is this first step of the Seder, which is Kadesh. Kadesh, obviously related to the word Kiddush, which is, uh, it sh shares the same root as the word Kadosh or Kiddusha, which is this idea of holiness or sanctification. We begin the Seder through sanctification um, of the wine, but really of the day, sanctifying the day. And I'm going to share my screen with you now, if you can figure out how to do this. I'm going to share my screen with you now. Um, did that work? There we go. So uh, hopefully you're now looking at my screen where we see our Passover guide from last year, which we're using for these various teaching sessions, these Zoom teaching sessions. And last year I wrote on the topic of Kadesh and specifically looking at the theme of holiness and how holiness serves as sort of an overarching theme for the holiday of Passover, but especially uh, for the Seder. I wanna first begin by talking about two very famous Jewish commenta commentators, Rashi and Maimonides, who offer different, but I think connected and important takes on this notion of holiness. Rashi, who was a, a medieval French commentator, um, he talks about holiness is about abstaining from the negative. And he, he frames this in a 
we could have a whole class on this, but in a discussion on, uh, he specifically references certain um, Jewish values and uh, teachings around uh, um, how we should um, be careful in the relationships that we have and how we should abstain from certain relationships um, that he would consider to be, that he considered to be unholy. So he really focuses on holiness from the negative perspective. And then Rambam, my money, comes along years later, and he builds on this interpretation that Rashi offers. He says it's not just about abstaining from the negative, but it's also about moving towards the positive. How can we uh, move away from the negative, but move towards the positive? And through these interpretations, I think they set up this beautiful sort of dual nature of holiness. That holiness is about moving away from what is not holy and moving towards that which is holy. And I think this really brings us back to those four cups of wine that we were just speaking about, these four cups of wine that we drink at the Seder. It's about moving away from that which is not holy, uh, slavery in Egypt, uh, being an enslaved people, being in bondage, and moving towards that which is holy, really that which the whole story of Pesach and the Exodus of Egypt sets up, this moving towards freedom, moving towards relationship with God, and eventually moving towards um, the land of Israel and becoming the, 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 uh, the people that we are today. So I think that uh, one way that perhaps we can, when we, when we reach Kiddush, when we reach this first uh, step of the Seder and of Kadesh, and we say Kiddush of the Seder, and we welcome people to our Seder tables, to perhaps think about how can we incorporate a discussion around this um, for our friends and family. What is it that is holy that we are trying to move towards? And in doing so, what might we be moving away from that distracts us or takes us away from that holiness? What is the holiness in your lives? What is that sense of kedusha, that sense of sanctity that you would like to move towards, both at the Seder itself, or perhaps even more um, moving past the Seder, moving through the holiday of Pesach and throughout the year? So that's one, perhaps, suggestion for something to talk about the Seder. Second thing is, is, is what, I talked, what I wrote about specifically in, uh, in this article, which, which sets up holiness moving in different directions. First of all, when we recite Kiddush, when we complete the step of Kadesh at the Seder, there's an aspect of linear holiness. We're sitting around a table with family and friends, and, we ha and it invites us, but through the sanctification of the day, through the raising of the cup of wine, to ask ourselves, who are the people that bring holiness into our lives, into my life? Who are the people that surround me with this sense of holiness? And how can I do the same for those who I care about and I love? And it's also a, perhaps a vertical holiness, certainly a vertical holiness, where, um, you know, extend a certain uh, sense of relationship with God through the recitation of Kiddush, and also this idea of trying to connect heaven and earth, trying to bring that sense of holiness, that Kiddushah, that God brings to the world, and bring it to us and to our community and to our families and to our Seder table. And finally, there's also the sense of temporal holiness, this holiness in time. In many ways, that's what the holidays are about. That's what these special moments in life are all about. There's something really beautiful about beginning a holiday beginning, in this case, the Passover Seder, surrounded by family and friends, lifting up that Kiddush cup, and really what Kiddush is all about, it's, it's about sanctity in time. It's about the sanctity of the holiday and recognizing that this is a special moment in our lives where hopefully we feel surrounded and enveloped by that sense of holiness, of Kiddusha, of that which is Kadosh. And we see that reflected in the language of Kiddush itself. Obviously, we begin by saying Borei Priyagafen, but that's really just the blessing over the wine or grape juice itself. But then, in the actual Kiddush, we move into the language of um, being sanctified by God's mitzvot, being uh, the, the sanctity of the holiday of Passover, uh, commemoration of our exodus from Egypt. Um, and then it concludes, Baruch Ata Adonai Mekadesh Yisrael Hasmanim. Blessed are you, Adonai, who sanctifies uh, Mekadesh, the people of Israel, and the festivals. 
So we have this holiness going in all different directions. We have the holiness in the linear sense, the vertical sense, and also the temporal sense. So I want to invite everyone as you say Kiddush at your seders this year to have in mind this sense of this multi-directional holiness. Who are the people in your life that make your life holy? When have you perhaps to discuss before or after reciting Kiddush, when have you felt a sense of holiness in your life? And bringing it specifically to the Seder and to the holiday of Pesach, perhaps to ask and perhaps to share um, with your table, uh, how has the Seder been a holy experience for you in years past? And what can you do on that Seder evening to make sure to ensure that this is a holy experience for all those who join you and you join together that evening. I want to wish everyone a, a, a Chag Sameach, a, a Passover, a Pesach that is filled with this sense of holiness and where we can be grateful for all the blessings that we have in our lives and the holiness that comes in all directions from the people around us, from God and from ourselves. Chag Sameach, and now I'll uh, have an opportunity to answer some questions. Anyone who has any questions, I'd love to hear that.